Yeah, also on my to-do list is to watch all these Bluetooth Pioneer programs, uh, but really now it's kind of a little bit hard. With, oh, I think Quinn joined. Hello. Uh, hello. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. You can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes. So how uh, registering tokens? Yeah, this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be really fun. This is a really unique thing. I haven't decided how useful this is or how. I mean, it's very strange because it's a, a database for tokens, uh, quasi hosted by IOSK, but really it's a GitHub uh, repository of token metadata. So sorry, it seems it's like by Cardano Foundation. If, uh, oh, is it? it is the, yeah. yeah. Oh, it is. It is the MSCF. Yeah, and it had like kind of critics because like if Cardano is decentralized, why do we need like uh, this registry by Cardano Foundation? The way I just kind of see this whole token registry now is really a way of kind of adding a layer of authenticity to a token. Like so pump and dump junk just kind of tokens that people mint and stuff maybe won't get approved or go through the process of token registry so from your experience quinn with the you know when you're testing this out is there any type of approval process in the token registry or can anyone just go and mint a token and then go to token registry and register it I think anyone can go and mint a token and register it, but you will have to get approved with a pull request. So whoever is the contributors to the GitHub repo that are allowing the pull request to be combined with the dev or main branch, they are the controllers of who gets to be in the, the token registry. Um, but yeah, I think anyone technically can. And I wouldn't be surprised there's gonna be some decentralized solutions to this. Like I'm surprised that the metadata isn't being registered as transactions on the blockchain where you can store all the metadata in the metadata of a transaction. And then there's no reason to have a centralized token registry. But it's a really good point that they get to be kind of like the, the gatekeepers of legitness. You know, they, they it, it's unfortunate that they are gatekeeping, but at the same time, if you look at what's going on in the Binance chain, what's going on in the Ethereum chains, there's these tokens that show up out of nowhere and they get, it's a pump and dump scheme, like you said, and it's kind of scary that that is possible, but at the same time, it's how do you prevent that, I guess. And, and basically here, the register is like um, policy ID. So policy ID is kind of analogy of the contract in Ethereum. And maybe we can assume that, well, now this is like one registry, then let's say uh, such sites like Coin Market Cap, Coin Gecko, they will probably create their own registry. For example, they will add uh, tokens which have a real like trading volume, like even, Emerald. Yeah, yeah even my um, my original Fund Four proposal had its own token registry, and it it didn't it didn't even use this token registry at all. It was a custom built one that I made just so you could store and reference tokens on the marketplace. So I, this might be a, um, a Hydra kind of thing where it's not gonna be one head that we control at all. It's gonna be this multi, multi-dimensional kind of thing where many different companies are all doing this together. Gotcha. But yeah, we can uh, definitely go over it. Um, it's, Fairly straightforward process, actually. Uh, the only thing that might be a little tricky is getting the Nix uh, build set up. I don't, if anyone's ever, I don't know if you happen to have experience with the Nix building at all. Um, it's very interesting. It's kind of a nice little wrapper, I guess, uh, around everything. But it'd be nice to be able to show you how to do that. And we'll kind of go through the process step by step. Cool beans, Zoom. You should have screen share access. So the Cardano Foundation has a repo called the Cardano Token Registry. Uh, this is the all-in-one token registry for Cardano and how you to get your off-chain token metadata to map to on-chain tokens that you can actually use. 
And we're going to go through the process of building the repo, submitting and creating a new pull request, and hopefully we can see if our token gets added to the registry. One of the key aspects of this is getting the NICs to build. And what we need to start with is actually going to your NICs installation guide. If you're familiar with the Plutus Pioneer program, you will be using NICs because they, they uh, IOSK as well as the Cardano Foundation are heavily involved in using the NICs single user install. Uh, and what will... does what does NICs stand for or what's the uh, premise behind it? That's a great question. I always thought it allows, <clears throat> I kind of got the feeling it was almost like you're making a, uh, an a special environment on your computer. Like instead of making a custom, uh, I don't know if you ever use Conda, like you can have a Conda activate main, and now you can create your own developer environment within Conda. Okay. I thought it was always kind of that idea where instead of using Conda, we're going to be using Nix and you can be building a custom Nix build environment. And what we were actually going to show uh, later on is you're building a, like almost like a shell that you can do all your coding in and you can separate the developer environments. And then you can have multiple uh, versions come out and not have any uh, kind of conflicts with uh, previous builds. Gotcha. Thank yeah. you. <clears throat> Let's see here. Let's make sure I have all the things set up. So once you have uh, so installing Nix is pretty straightforward, I believe. In a lot of ways, it's just running these two commands and just getting the Nix to be on your computer and having it install. If you're on uh, Linux, this is fairly straightforward. If you're on Windows, you need to be using a Windows subsystem, or the Linux subsystem, excuse me. And if you're on Mac, I believe this probably should work fairly easily. Uh, what we will be doing is the first thing is actually pulling and cloning the Cardano token registry, which I've actually done by having the off chain meta tools, which is actually an IOSK GitHub. Here. Where is it exactly? Here we go. This off-chain metadata tools is a very nice command line uh, interface for building custom metadata, um, assigning uh, automated token metadata generators, uh, allows you to interact with the GitHub repos. It's a really nice- uh, What do you mean by auto metadata token generator? It seems like for me messing around with it, it has a, a lot of, if we actually can look at the API documentation. Uh, this is actually allows you to put in your custom policy uh, ID. This would be the actual hash of your policy script. You can have your custom name for your token. You can have a, a URL ticker and logo associated with your token. Like this is how you would create, uh, I would say like the Uniswap coins like tokens, even on your case, when you wanted to do the Emerald circuits and have its own ticker as well as image associated with it, this would be the way you could do it. How do you legitimize um, token tickers? How do you make token URLs point to your website? Uh, it, it's just making things in a very legitimate aspect. Okay. But a lot of it is just a compressed version of the metadata. Yeah. Gotcha. Let's see here. So we're going to go through a quick overview of building the off-chain metadata tools, and then we can build, go through the process of building this um, the metadata to be submitted to the Cardano token registry. Uh, first thing you want to do is cloning your off-chain metadata tools, which is because can be easily done with just a git clone. Uh, but I've actually already done it. So we can actually just go and CD into our off-chain metadata tools. 
uh, we were need to build out this uh, computation, which usually is done with a mix build command. But if I were to run this, it will automatically say it's not actually found, which is a uh, which is actually by design. And you actually are going to need to start a nix shell. I'm just control and copy pasting this into my. Uh, this is actually from the the nix website for their installation okay. guide. Uh, and then you just copy and paste it. And now, if I actually were to go back and run it, this should uh, probably give me some. I can actually probably run a help. Yep. And now we have a fully functioning nix build. Uh, this is you can also throw this into your um, your bash RC or your bash profile if you're familiar with those settings on on Ubuntu or Linux. Now none of this stuff requires to be connected to the Cardano node, correct? No, actually, this is uh, purely a GitHub repo thing. Um, this uh, the only thing that connects remotely with Cardano is the fact that you want to, you already had a token information. And that's pretty much it, though. A lot of it has kind of nothing to do with it. It's just it's its own little little cool, awesome thing. Um, now, uh, I just highly suggest building out all the packages within the meta token metadata creator. Uh, we don't know that it's going to happen in the future. Maybe we're going to need some of these modules. So we. Uh, IOSK actually provides a really nice building from source guide. And I always suggest building from source so you can look at inspect the code. But we are be running the Nix build all, and then you're going to build the project. This may take a while. And this would be a great time for some movie, movie magic where you just uh, speed this process up. <laughs> um, but I actually already did this. Uh, so we can just fast forward to the complete build. And now, uh, we can assume at this point it already was built out. What we need to run is a developer shell. This will create our developer environment with it using Nix, and then inside the Nix shell, we will we will build the token metadata and allow ourselves to uh, uh, submit the the new metadata. This kind of takes a little bit of a while, but it's it's fine. It's not as bad as building Plutus, but it still takes a little bit. Now we're actually in the Nix environment, which you can tell because it changes into the Nix shell mm -hmm. here. Uh, now, but within Nix, we actually have access to custom built uh, command line uh, interfaces. So now, for example, I can actually exit out of this just for to show you. If I were to run token metadata right now, and try to uh, excuse me. You don't need you don't need a calculator. Like if I within outside of the Nix, if I actually want to run the token metadata creator, it doesn't actually find. Even though we can find the actual build code for it, like this is actually it is in this folder, but we can't actually use it. So gotcha. that's why you have to enter the Nix shell, and then inside the Nix environment, that becomes an executable in the command line interface. So now as we enter the next shell again, I'll run the token metadata creator and it actually will pop up into this interactive little fun little program. Uh, this, if you actually build it out, it probably takes like 20, 30 minutes. So it's not that bad. So now we can say, okay, we're inside the next shell. Let's do the token metadata creator. You can see it already works out. And then we're missing a command, so let's go help. So what we're going to be doing is pretty much following these, these nice little how-to steps. Uh, we want to prepare an entry for the registry. And we're going to uh, <clears throat> take our, let's say, we're, let's do the Emerald Circuits um, NFT, because that was a, a really easy one. That, that one has a ticker and an image. It's very uh, currency-like, in, in my opinion. Yep. Uh, so we're going to do this. Maybe this looks familiar to you uh, from our pool PM token generation, where you have a policy ID and then dotted into your asset name. Obviously, their fake token is just called my asset name. Mm -hmm. Um, what we want to do is actually 
do your Emerald circuits one. So we need to find not just the policy ID, which we have, because we can go like this into um, your example mentioned scripts. And then we can go into your policy. And then this is, so that's your policy ID for producing the Emerald scripts. You can see from uh, right here, this is your lab access. We can also do it on the lab access, lab access tokens if we wanted to as well. But one key thing is we have to find the hex encoding of the asset name. Uh, this is because a lot of the tokens are actually associated with the concatenation of the policy ID in the hex encoded asset name. I actually didn't know about this cool little function, but this is awesome. This is a great easy way on your command line to find your hex encoded version of your asset name. So that is the hex encoded of my asset name. You can see that you can do, you know, a hello world and they'll always produce the same hash. So a user can actually test these out and they 100% should get the same exact answer I'm getting. But we want to do Admiral Circus, which is Admiral. No, it's an Admiral Circus. Oh, I, put Admiral. It, I put it in the chat too, if you oh, need the. Thank you, because uh, my, uh, I can't spell Sorry, it. I put it in the Zoom chat. Okay. Let me get this real quick. Um, yeah. I am so bad at spelling. We'll take this. So what we want is, if you can tell, you see how even in pool.pm, they're also using the dot notation up here in the URL. Mm -hmm. We want this to be in here. So you, let's, this has to be exactly the same. Any difference is technically a new hash and it will not be an accurate representation of the token that you're making. So gotcha. the hashing of Admiral circuits is, uh, the super long hash actually. So what we need is the combination of your um, policy ID plus the hashing of Admiral circuits. This will be what would be considered uh, not the fingerprint, but just the what is needed for this. I, I forgot the exact word. I'll come up in like two seconds. Yeah, it's yeah. This is the, oh yeah, this is the subject file, subject of your token data. So we want to talk about a certain token and a certain token's metadata. How can we uniquely define that token? Well, we can define it by having the subject be the concatenation of the policy ID plus the hex encoded asset name. Now we're really just gonna kind of follow this uh, whole step-by-step um, -step process right here. Inside the next show, let's uh, start out by saying, all right, let's token metadata creator. We're gonna create a new entry and we're going to initialize it with this. I'm gonna copy and paste this. If you were doing this uh, as a shell script, I would probably be using some form of uh, a money sign where we're gonna be um, Catting the policy script and then adding that into it. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to do it by hand because it's pretty simple. A lot of this isn't really, um, doesn't really need to be an automated process. It's actually fairly, it's easy. It's it's really nice actually. So and then at, automation would be more required if it if this had like multiple entries or something, right? It's not really. You're going to do this one time for your token and then you're done. Yeah, and from looking at all the other tokens, even if you, you had a series of NFTs or a series of different types of tokens, um, it's really just saying, what's the base asset name? What's the base policy ID? So you just, it's like a, not a vague, but a really high level explanation of the metadata. You, it, 
is not the nitty gritty pool.pm where it's like every single field is being shown. It is just like, all right, what's what's the token? Oh, does it have a ticker associated? Is there an image should be, that should be auto loaded when anyone wants to trade this token? Um, like Ada has the, the A, you know, it'd be like that kind of stuff. Like how do you legitimize, uh, how do you make that available for everyone? Gotcha. So let's just uh, copy, let's just do this. Let's see what happens. So this is your policy ID. And then we're just gonna, right there. You just add those together? Mm -hmm. It's a, a concatenation of it. Okay. If you are using, um, well, what is it? The Block Frost or even Dandelion API service, they always ask you to do this uh, because it, since asset names are not unique, but policy IDs are unique, we need a way to connect these things together so we can exactly point to a single token. How would you do that? Just add them together. How did? Really... Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. What else? What was your question? No, and I see you. You're, you're so you're you're creating this now by adding those two together. It's not something the uh, the code is. It doesn't have to recognize these are two different things being put together because you're making this a new thing. Yeah. It. It. Yeah. It doesn't. I guess you. It doesn't automatically do that for you, even though it, it probably could. Um, but yeah, it doesn't automatically do the concatenation for you. Uh, I think it's it's really just a uniquely identified token. I think that's the the key idea of it. Yeah, it's a this is the way that you're generating that new unique ID. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Gotcha. So um, we're going to create the initialize this new entry, and what this is going to do is actually produce a JSON file uh, that has specific fields that represent the token but it's gonna create a draft version of it so we can add it and append to it. And then eventually we will finalize it. And that is what we're gonna be uh, submitting our token to. So let's just run this and see what happens. So you can tell that the output is a json.draft file. And we can actually look into our folder and you realize the Admiral circuits is right here at the top. Uh, now we need to add in specific uh, data components that we want to it. There's a lot of, there's optional fields and required fields. Some of the required fields are a little obvious, like the name of the token and the policy script that needs to be hashed to create the uh, policy ID, things like that, things that you would need in the first place just to create a token. So now let's go to, uh, let's continue. So we can uh, come back and we can actually use the same line of code, except now we don't need to initi initialize our new JSON object. We actually we just want to append or change the existing entry that is um, your token. So you can see I just deleted the, the dash dash initialize call. And now this is going to know a draft file exists and we want to add in additional uh, fields to this metadata file. Gotcha. So now uh, we will throw in um, a backslash just so, hey, let's make a new line on our CLI. And we can start kind of following this out. Uh, so the name, uh, this is Admiral Circuits. Admiral, I'm just going to get the exact spelling because I don't want to mess this up. Everything's got to be exact to where it will be different. So, yeah, and it's important because yeah. that's a play on words right there. <laughs> it's, a, it's important for the play on words, and it's important when you are dealing with um, hashing information because uh, we can, if you add a space in it, it is not the same. And it's very, very important, especially within blockchain technologies. But yeah, let's, uh, so we want to add in the name. We want to add in a description which actually I believe is on our pool PM. Don't we have a description? Yes, we do. And we're, I'm just gonna copy and paste this right here. Yep. Cause this is technically the description. Um, just like before when we were producing the Admiral Circuits NFTs, uh, 
I believe this also is required to be less than 64 characters. Um, there is a max size to this. I was under that assumption. That may not be true, but I think it's a very safe thing to say. I think it's safe to assume also. So we will do this. We have the correct descriptions, exactly what we want. And the final field is the policy script, which you can see they call it a policy.json object, which is technically correct. It is a JSON object, but uh, it is the script file. And that script file exists in example minting scripts in our policy, policy script file. This will append it. Now uh, we can see these changes by actually just expecting uh, this draft file with a nice little cat call. And you can see that it's auto making this. We, the only reason we're using this uh, CLI is we don't want to accidentally incorrectly produce uh, the metadata. This is a really simple, all like you just type in the name and it just auto produces it. But you can yep. see that this JSON object isn't that complicated. I mean, if you really think about it, it's just what's your, what's your policy? Here's your concatenation of the, so you can uniquely define the token. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's really not that bad, but you can tell that it doesn't actually associate increments of the, the it doesn't know the serial numbers. It just knows like the base value for it. Gotcha. But let's uh, add in a couple of things because there will be, um, this is going to be really applicable for us. And let's um, start this token meta. Let's append uh, the entry of our, which is this. And we don't need the draft file. We just need the actual policy ID hash. And then uh, we're going to add in some more information. Let's. Uh, this is the additional optional. Op we don't technically need this. Uh, actually, at this point, all we would need to do is sign this and then pass it to the registry. Uh, but we, of course, this is a currency-like governance token. So we probably would want to add in uh, the ticker, which actually is another thing we added to the pool.pm information, which we can just grab, of course, right here. I thought we did. Yeah, it's called yep. ADM. ADM. So now, of course, we'll come in, say ADM. And what else information we want on here? Uh, we had a URL for the image. Now, I'm going to open up an additional. Um, I'm pretty sure I have that image file still in this. Yes, I do. That the, is um, the image. The. Uh... URL though that is to the um, token image or that's a URL to the related project. I'm gonna follow this link and I'm gonna see what happens because I just realized that it's a Final Fantasy fandom site that's trying to show Gil. I don't know if you ever familiar with Final Fantasy. That was the currency inside the game. So let's see what they're trying to do. This is actually linking to the website describing what would this be, this token. So I think this would be... Ada Makerspace. Oh, yeah, uh, I think it's the Ada, yeah. Ada Makerspace. Ada, ma com, Ada Maker right? dot space. Dot space. This is what... Uh, we want that right there. So let's go back to our, our terminal. Let's go back to our guide. Uh, yes, this is specific... Now they have it as an HTTPS. I wonder if this should be the full URL to this. I would, I would include the HTTPS. Yeah, I don't know if we want to assume. Um, yeah. And basically is there is like no place to, to put the image. Uh, the the image, you're, you're going to link it as a logo. And so you can tell from this example, they're just, telling it there's this image called icon.png it's very interesting that it doesn't auto load an image like it's not an ipfs link it's purely that there is an image and it's called icon png which is very interesting i don't know could you i would imagine that you should be able to do you think that has to be a the image file or could it be a link to the image file the I like an IPFS address. 
it's really interesting. I, I'm really curious because this is the IPFS hash. Like we, this is the image that we would want to do on my screen right here. Mm -hmm. And on this, let's actually, there's a great way to find that out because we can go back to the Cardano Foundation. We can look into the mappings folder, which is mapping all the off-chain to the on-chain data for all the tokens. You can see there's a whole bunch of uh, tokens that have been added over the past months and the past couple of days. Let's see if we can find one that's really obvious. Uh, Cyber, Cyberpunk, isn't it? I think that's an NFT art card out. That's probably pretty, let's see what they're doing. <laughs> that's an easy way. Uh -huh. um, they're not even adding a icon actually at all. So let's go to a different one and let's see what happens. I This is what I did last time. I was just seeing what everyone else is doing. Uh, yep, they had a, they're using their Cardano Bits website, but they're actually not including a uh, IPFS hash as well. Let's see, let's um, hear a yay swap that potentially might be a, a, a currency token. Let's see what's going on. And uh, oh, I see, here we go. Holy crap, what the hell is this? Okay, <laughs> sorry. Wow, what is that? Is that for their <laughs> image, their logo? That's what they have as a logo. Okay, so this is interesting. Hey, let's uh, let's add this logo on because I have it locally on my computer. Well, um, I'm kind of curious if it hashes it into it. Um, you, I just in uh, Telegram, I just sent you an image named properly. I want to make sure that we use a, uh, a file that has the correct file name. So you want it to be the Ada Makerspace Admiral Circuits. Let's go back and do here. I have it as, do you, do you see this right here? This is what yeah, I it's the, it's an old, it's the old file name. That's why if the, if this, if that's why it's so important to me. So if this file name is going to be recorded, I want it, the file name to be the correct. So let me, let me make this so we can change it right. Uh, let's just uh, move this and we'll change it into air. But we're going to make this makerspace. Do you want, to, are you okay with the uh, the dashes or do you want me to make it one word? No, the dashes are fine. Okay, let's just go. Like but I just do want it to be uh, the, the image file name to be correctly represented. Absolutely. Admiral. Circuits. And you can just remove, yep, oh, thank you, all that. And that's, that's not needed. Um, let's thank see you, thank here. You. That is correctly spelt. That is correctly spelt. We are not making any misprints here. Oh, there is a misprint. Circuits has an I. Misprints are going to be a thing. I've already seen a couple of individuals say, I accidentally have some misprints. It was a little too easy. All right. There we go. I believe that is a correctly named file right there. Ada Makerspace Admiral Circuits. All right. Let's uh, go back to our, our guide and let's uh, continue on with this. So yeah, let's add a logo and let's see what happens. I'm really curious if it's going to hash out the image and will. So how would I, do I want to move the image into this folder? I think I want to do that. I'm going to copy this, but I'm going to say, go into our off-chain metadata and let's move the file into there. Because now I should be able to say, Ada Makerspace. It does hash it. Okay. So we might need to change the file name just to Admiral Circuits. It looks like it, to fit the length. Loading image data, error in the money sign. Length has, must be no more than 65. Okay, that's maxing the size out, but that's there's no way that's 64 characters, is it? 
Let me check this real easy. No, it's 36. I think this is actually the image size. Pretty small image, the, like 112 gigabytes or something. Um, the the original image I have is a 500 by 500 um pixel. Uh, it 128 divided by two is 65 approximately. Anyway, uh, I wonder if the max image size is is about 200 pixels. On you should down, download the one I put in your Telegram because it's only 125 gigabytes. Okay, then that's, I think that's what we need. That means the original, I'm not going to go through all that, but yeah, that's okay. That's interesting. Um, let's, oh no, I want to, I want to just download this. How do I? This is what we want. I'm just going to do this by hand and just, Super easy to do this. Don't worry about all my, my things. All right, we're gonna paste this. I'm gonna update the name. This is an incorrect image. We already have a copy of this. So I'm just gonna delete this right now. And we will, of course, fix this name like this. Okay. Let's see what it is. Let's do that one more time. So the image name is correct. I don't think I need to change that. I think that's what it's called. Hmm. Yeah, I got the same. Uh... Maybe let's try to make this uh, the name smaller. And maybe without capital. Try words. just name try naming it ADM and then remove all the maker space and just be ADM Admiral Circuits. Like that? Yeah. Let's see if that solves the I wonder if this is a I wonder actually if they're expecting you to your logo on your on your ticker is supposed to be this like little tiny image then because if it's a how is it saying that the image is too large all right let's see uh let's go like this let me adjust this real quick yeah all right so what if i'm like this how the heck um when you were looking at the documentation from the foundation before what was it what did it say about the logo <laughs> it doesn't it just calls it a a separate image file um let's see let me think about this this is 128 kilobytes and the original documentation that you gave me which is here i have the original image script this was also oh would you resave we need to resave this file and we need to make it 65 kilobytes. Um, Wait a second. Yeah, I, I think that may be it. That means they, yeah, they are hashing the actual image. Just that makes second. sense then. And then. Is it. Uh... The other documentations you were looking at on this, did it have a, a suggested size or anything? Uh, it's, that's a good question because I haven't done image manipulation in a while. Um, it's, it's I, I, my, my hypothesis would be uh, it needs to resize the image from 500 pixels down. Cause you said that one was like 150 pixels, but still the saved data was still 128 kilobytes. Like we need to save that. Uh, I wonder if, if does PNG would... matter, does it also need to be a PNG possibly um, since they have PNG in the. I think PNG, I, I, I'm kind of curious. I actually don't know what's larger PNG or of JPEG. Maybe. Um, PNG I'm going to give you a PNG. Follow. What was the file size I'm uh, shooting um, for? 65 want, kilobytes? Yeah, 65 kilobytes. 
So let's see, because this is 125. And that is a that is a harsh limit. Hopefully we can just uh, decrease uh, the size with uh, some image editor. I'm doing it right yeah. now. Yeah, I think that's the solution. I'm just making sure I get it as close to that as I can. Yeah, it's unfortunate that because uh, your res resolution on that image is not going to get like compressed. But well, I guess in the future we know that to when we're making currency like tokens, we want to have the foresight to produce a logo that will be correct size and not get all weird and compressed, I guess. Also, it's interesting to ask, like, so this editing, which we are doing in command line, basically it's also possible to do in the text editor, yes? Oh yeah, uh, it, it, if you wanted to, this whole thing could be in a text and you can wrap it into a bash script and then you can just run your bash script and you can even get this advanced enough where it becomes a automated process on a website where a user can mint an NFT and then have it auto upload as a repo, as a pull request as a repo. And that's potentially a, a really cool avenue for this in the future if this becomes um, maybe standardized for uh, token generation. Kind of curious how many, uh, how is this going to work? Uh, let's, okay. Uh, PNG in your telegram. All right, we got, we, got, we got 52 kilobytes. Here we go. So show in the folder. Okay, which one is it? That is the one where it's copied. And it has a brand new file name too. So, I mean, it, it's the same file name, but I've removed the dash from between Admiral and circuits. That's cool. So let's go here, paste. Okay, so there's no dash in the Admiral circuits. We can run this code again. Can I be in the right terminal? So this actually should work. PNG. It's got to be PNG. Oh, it's a PNG. Oopsies. PNG, portable network graphics. Oh, and there we go. So now let's actually look at the JSON file and see what it actually did. Did that work? Yep. And look, and just how I, I was thinking, it is actually hashing the image. The image. Is, okay. Yeah. So this is, if you took the hash, of an image and then saved it into the file. <laughs> oh wow, it really does that. Okay, um, yeah. If you actually ever that's a beautiful that, image. That's a, that's yeah. That's there's nothing horrible about that. It's like one I, of those hidden pictures, you know. <laughs> just cross your eyes a little bit. You, it all makes sense, man. Okay, so we will now. Uh, what makes this official and I guess really legit is not only are you producing this json file that has your token data as the minter of the token you are personally signing the this data with your policy signing key so gotcha. not only is it authentic that you made it it's authentic because you signed it which only only the person with the minting policy signing keys can also register a token Yep. Like, so if someone were to come here and try to falsify this information, you would immediately know it's fake because you have the signing key. You can literally sign it and be like, look at this, the, the signing key is incorrect. How could this ever, how can this be real? It, mine is the real one. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's sign this with your uh, policy S key. So let's go back into this. Let's edit the entry. And I believe it's like that. And now they're saying what you do is you have uh, this A uh, option, which is I imagine is, a, I would assume appending, I can look that up later. So we need this, we'll go back into our policy and then we will policy S key. Now I wanna I wanna look re-look at this draft file because I wanna show you what this is actually doing. So see if I can show you in the screen if I go, oh, is it too far up? Oh, it may be too far up. So now we have a public key as well as a signature one. You can see that each uh, 
additional information on the token data is always being signed. Uh, initially on the draft, these are empty fields. You can, uh, if you have multiple signing keys, you can add more signs, but this is basically what it's doing. It signs each aspect to it and you know it's authentic and it's always from the true creator of the, the policy ID. Um, at this point, uh, we can actually finalize the metadata file and which is really easily done because we just call in the finalized script. So let's go like this again. And we'll do the option finalize. You can see that it removes the dot draft file. And now we have a complete JSON file associated with Admiral circuits. And now we can uh, move forward into the submission of the token data to the GitHub repo. So let me get that going. That was how to prepare. And now we're gonna how to submit an entry. Oh, I said sip of water. I will say this is an interesting solution to this that they are um, kind of standing on the shoulders of giants that they are using not only as a centralized source to have all the token data. It is a third party centralized source. Like this whole thing relies on GitHub never failing. Gotcha. Uh, and it's, it's very interesting. It's definitely standing on, on the, sh the shoulders of giants. It, it, that's a very legitimate thing to do, but uh, it is kind of interesting for a decentralized blockchain, they rely on a third party centralized source to do their token data. But let's uh, let's figure this out. Um, I do not need to be inside the Nick shell anymore. I believe. Uh, I actually just want to want to exit out of this. Let's clear up our screen. So the way you do this, uh, just like with any uh, GitHub repo, you're going to excuse me. Uh, with any GitHub repo, we are going to clone the actual repository. We're going to create a new branch. We're going to add some things. We'll, we'll commit it, and then we'll push it to the repo. And then we're going to submit a pull request and be like, hey, can my additional information be added to the repo? And that is fairly straightforward. Let's, uh, I'm just going to copy their lines, and I'm going to see what happens. I'm just going to use my name and I'm going to see what happens. I didn't do this on my test case, so I'm kind of curious what's going to happen here. Oh, do you want an RSA ticket on this? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. What's it saying that you don't have permission to access the GitHub? Um, GitHub is changing all um, all logins into RSA keys. Uh, this is going to happen in July, and I believe what they're trying to do right now is force you to use RSA keys. But there's a way to circumvent it by just going the old school way, and we're just going to clone it. That is a, a very important aspect that's going to happen in a couple months. Everything's going RSA keys and passwords are going to become useless. So uh, what we want to do in here is we are actually inside the token registry file. We can see that there is a mappings. There's the, the, the shell Nix if we wanted to use Nix in here. But what we want to do is simply copy over our new uh, token file, which is this, which is the JSON file of the token metadata. That we just into, created. Yeah, we just created this. We actually want to put it into the mappings folder. All, all new tokens will always be in the mappings folder. So we go like this. 
and we can check that we did that correctly because it's gonna be a whole bunch of things in here. Why did someone make this executable? That's weird. And we wanted 4A1EE and then we have 41AEE. I don't know why I'm able to pick that out so fast. All right, um, so this is a pretty standard GitHub um, addition right here. We can add in the file we just uh, did, which is mappings, and we have 4A like this. So let's add that. Uh, we're going to git, we're going to commit this. And this is where I want to spell this correctly. So I will come back here and grab this. Uh, the exact spelling of this. And now we'll come back to the guide. All right, here we know that you're inserting the changes. And now let's push this to the head branch. And we'll see what happens. And I'll type in my super secret everything here. Permission to the Cardano first denied. Uh, fatal request URL contained a 403. Damn, do they really only want you to? Hold on a second. Let's see. Yeah, they really just want you to use that. All right, so mission to the Carnival Foundation is denied to my GitHub because they returned a 403. Okay. What is a 403? Uh, bad, re forbidden request, I believe. I'm doing something they don't want me to do. Um, what, what is that? Sorry, I'm going to try to figure this out. Oh, this goes back to this. When uh, when you're adding it to the mappings folder, uh, is there a layer of uh, permission then that they have to approve it before it can be submitted? Or is, I'm trying to think what would be... Uh, Does it have anything to do with not being in the Nix container? I uh, potentially it could be that, but why would the Git need to it's denied because they want you to do what is this mean? What does this mean? GitHub. I'm obviously going to Stack Overflow and solve this problem. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. It's an, author an authorization issue. So, so basically, they need to approve your account uh, before the submission. Yeah, but you should be able to do this. Um, yeah, it would seem weird that they would have a, a roadblock to keep, uh, like, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out why. No, they don't even want to add, put, let you push anything on it. Okay. That's nice, but check out. Okay, um, let's see here. Is this, why is this happening? Because they don't want you to use without an RSA key, I imagine. That's probably why. You think it's a GitHub auth auth authentication issue? Yeah. Uh, 
So I'm looking at see if there's an issue or even should I hit someone up on uh, Telegram and ask him about this. I have a feeling it has something to do with the RAC, RSA keys. Um, because why are why is everyone else allowed to do pushes to this? Sorry about this. I don't know, man. It's part of the learning process. <sighs> yeah, it's just a pull request. I honestly would post this in the Cardano development one. I don't know. It's so weird. So I've never seen this before either. I'm, this is a weird, I, when I, I didn't think this was going to happen. Here. Oh, no worries. Dude. And we can always uh, reconvene and. Uh... So do I need a RSA community push? Keep getting this err. Let's see if anyone. Telegram's awesome like that. Let's see what happens. So I think the uh, the issue has to come down with this line, and so I'm actually let's back out of this, and we're gonna redo this line, and we're gonna see what error this gives us, because maybe this is the indication, and this is why they want it to be done this way, and you shouldn't be doing it the old school way because the old school way doesn't, is not gonna become applicable anymore. Bad public key. This is that's why I think this is. Uh, I did. Okay, so clearly it's the key. Oh, wow, this is a whole thing. Okay. Well, today is a great day to get your uh, SSH keys on GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is, this is it. You got to change it. So, what do they want you to do? Okay. That's it's on my account, and I have to actually add additional information. I'm not giving away my personal information here. Let's see what happens. I can delete all this through all the videos. <laughs> you have you have no HSA keys. Okay, so that's uh, okay. So I think this is.
wants to help, but I don't know how to help. Switching my own awesome. I, uh, you need to fork the repo, not clone. What? Dude, am I just like dumb? What the fuck? <laughs> Sorry, I should guess the video. <laughs> <laughs> Is that but, the but we... it, it, it's but it says to it says fork and clone. Oh, that is just I am so confused. <sighs> I didn't know there's a difference. I thought forking meant you were cloning. What is what is uh the main difference that we're that is being shown here between forking and cloning? I think cloning is saying you're allowed to add or push the actual repo, where forking is saying no, I'm making my own version of the repo, and then I want to add that fork back into their previous repo gotcha that, that would be my hypothesis for that that Let's, sounds that sounds like a good hypothesis Let's try to fork this i'm so i i thought they were the same i honestly thought they were the same what are they saying oh is that Wow. Okay. Were you, and now the, just to make sure I'm understanding the process, were you yeah. supposed to make a clone of this fork? I think that's the idea yeah. is you are creating your own repo, make the changes, which I imagine this makes more sense because if everyone was cloning and pushing, then everyone would have to be a contributor to the project, where if you forked it and then allow the fork to be added, then maybe you don't have to be that. So now I can actually sit here and say, well, let me clone my own thing. Oh, and also now look at the, at the yeah, I think this is it. Now let's clone this repo, CD into the Cardano registry, well, CP, the file of my, uh, what do you call it? my off chain metadata? And then that's the 4A JSON. And we're going to map this into the mappings folder. So now I can say, great, git add uh, mappings 4A. This makes more sense because now I can add any files I want to my registry. Mm -hmm. So let's add into this. Let's commit the changes. Uh, this is where I would grab in this. I will sync it. Perfect. Git push origin head. Now I am allowed to do this. Yeehaw. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. And now we all learn the difference of forking and cloning. Okay. Awesome. I, I just, <laughs> that's new to me. I, I, I've been doing this for, I thought they were always the same. So now we can create a pull request from your fork. That's what we want. So I can go into my repos and look at all my code. And then I can say, okay, Let's do a pull request. Ah, uh, you see how I'm, I'm making a pull request into the Cardano Foundation. Yep. I'm saying, hey, take my fork, pull it, push it into your repo, but I had the rights to my own. So now yeah, and this is, this is kind of the way that they kind of become the gatekeepers of, uh, you know, 
what token get registered in the registry. They want to make sure that you're following, you know, all the uh, rules and regulations. All the rules and regulations. And so we are creating a pull request on my fork, and then they're going to review it. Um, they say a few hours. I imagine if someone's on the computer looking at this, they'll probably get pulled pretty quickly. We are just adding a file. Let's uh, create this. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Checklist. Sure. Um, let's say uh, I am adding a token to token registry. That's not how you spell registry. I love spell check. Yeah, I use a. I it's either I become too reliant on it, or I just have realized in my life that I don't know how to spell things. Um, <laughs> it's it's a mix of one of those things. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's just, let's see what happens. That makes way more sense now. So we should be able to go, yeah, so we have our, our pull request is live and we're gonna find out if uh, CF is going to add, add more circuits into the token registry. That's awesome, um, we're on the list. Yeah, we're on the list, it's, it's official. Uh, yeah, so we'll find out in a couple hours if they review it. Um, I imagine they will maybe comment on it if they want additional changes. And then we just, again, uh, clone our personal fork, make the changes, and then do another pull request into it. I'm glad we worked that out. That makes a lot more sense of uh, the workflow, I guess. And also, I'm going to hit this guy back up on Telegram. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, great that uh, this also shows the power of the developer community in the Cardano ecosystem. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Everyone yeah, that was to awesome to get a response from a fellow developer so quickly. Usually it's like that. Every once in a while you're asked a good question and it would just be like crickets for hours. Usually it is so fast where someone's like, oh, hey, how do you know how to do that? Check this out. And I just got your problem solved. All right. Yeah, that's a, that is the, uh, the how-to right there. Cool beans, dude. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, uh, thank you, Queen. Of course, this is that was fun. I I learned some things too today. <laughs> I'm like a professional developer. <laughs> I don't know the difference of it. I'm so bad. Uh, oh, life is fun. Uh, Learn something new every day, dude.